Hello there, I'm Linda. Welcome to Rightfully So, where we delve into the Encyclopedia of Human Rights, a free digital resource available through Gwinnett County Public Library's website. Last time, we touched on the history of the United Nations Commissions on Human Rights by exploring civil and political rights. For today's video, I'm going to cover the origin and vast history of human rights around the world, or at least I'll try. The concept of worth and dignity of human life can be found in nearly every religion. Some of the oldest religious texts, including those of Hinduism, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, all emphasize the importance of mercy, justice, and charity. These texts serve to develop the norms seen in present-day human rights values and beliefs. According to the encyclopedia, Quote, Hinduism's ancient texts of the Vedas and Upanishads, some of which were written over 3,000 years ago, for example, instruct believers to respect the sacredness of life, to adhere to their duty to practice charity, and to act on behalf of justice for others. The scriptures of Judaism similarly speak about common humanity, laws of ethical behavior to protect against abuse, freeing the oppressed, and practicing social justice. The teachings of Buddhism, founded by Siddhartha Gautama approximately 2,500 years ago, stress human equality, the worth of each person, and the necessity for its followers to practice loving kindness and compassion toward all beings. The life, ministry, and teachings of Jesus, as indicated by the Sermon on the Mount and the parable of the Good Samaritan in the New Testament of the Bible, emphasize the responsibility of Christians to love others as themselves, to care for outcasts, and to alleviate human suffering. Muhammad's revelations of the 7th century, as it recorded in the Quran, similarly address the duty of those who believe in Islam to practice justice, mercy, and charity, particularly towards the most vulnerable in society." Unquote. Philosophy is the other major component in understanding the evolution of human rights theory. Moza, Confucius, Mencius, and Shenzi are among the many Chinese philosophers to uphold the idea of a moral force, meaning we all share a common humanity. Indian philosopher Kautilya wrote that the individual worth of each person gave them certain inherent rights that required even kings to respect them. Of course, ancient Greek and Roman philosophers also wrote about such concepts, determining that there is something called natural law. Plato, in particular, believed that everyone has inherent worth, including women and slaves, which was unheard of at the time. As capitalism replaced feudalism, private property ownership and the rise of the middle class resulted in a shift in the zeitgeist of human worth. The right to individual expression and intellectual freedom were underscored during the Renaissance. For example, in 1405, Christine de Pizan wrote in her Book of the City of Ladies that natural law and natural rights should be extended to women, not just men. Protestantism also emerged during this time period, underscoring spiritual emancipation, individual conscience, religious freedom, and political and social reform. Moving into the 17th and 18th centuries, these concepts were only solidified. For example, in 1625, Dutch diplomat Hugo Grotius wrote Rights of War and Civil Peace, which outlined that nature universally endowed all human beings with certain natural rights of protection and just and equal treatment irrespective of any religious or civil status. Most notable is the Enlightenment, a period in the 18th century that, among other things, 
focused on how if natural law established certain universal principles of justice and inalienable or natural rights, then all people were entitled to claim them simply because they were human. Francis Hutcheson, Jean-Jacques Berlamacqui, and Jean-Jacques Rousseau were among many of the voices behind this intellectual movement. In fact, the American Revolution and the French Revolution were born out of these Enlightenment ideals. The Declaration of Independence, written by Thomas Jefferson in 1776, is evidence of this. Quote, We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their Creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Unquote. But what about slavery? What if a human isn't considered human, but property? Even with British Parliament passing the Act for the Abolition of the Slave Trade, and the United States Congress passing the Act to Prohibit the Importation of Slaves in 1807, only the importation of slaves ended, not slavery itself. In the early 19th century, approximately three-quarters of all people were either slaves or serfs. Abolitionists like John Brown and Frederick Douglass led the emancipation movement by insisting that armed forces, wars, revolutions, and upheavals were the only way to end slavery. Slaves were not emancipated in the United States until after the Civil War, yet Cuba and Brazil continued human enslavement well into the 1880s. New technologies like telegraphs, railroads, and aircraft developed in the 20th century only bolstered the human rights movement, as it brought people together like never before. In the 21st century, social media and emerging technologies have heightened awareness of global atrocities and abuses. This has led to even greater visibility for the global human rights movement. The Universal Declaration of Human Rights is a culmination of the evolution of the aforementioned ideas and beliefs on human rights perspectives. Unfortunately, I couldn't cover the entire history of human rights movements, but if you'd like to learn even more about the history of human rights, especially how it ties into major events like the Holocaust, the World Wars, and apartheid, please check out the free digital encyclopedia of human rights available through the library. Tune in next time when we talk about disability rights.